up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2023 acura integra type s courtesy of bobby ray hall acura in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so we are in this one today because the type s is officially back for the integra just like it was back on the dc5 integra back like when i had it back in 2003 i think it was i don't even remember at this point but this is going to be a fun drive and so the question is is the integra type s going to be a more enjoyable drive than the civic type r because it does have more power but the civic type r is substantially less expensive so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering wheel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so MSRP for the Integra Type S will start at $50,800. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged VTEC four cylinder engine, putting out 320 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 310 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,600 RPM. That power being sent to the front wheels through a six speed manual with rev matching, by the way. Zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.7 seconds. Top speed, get this you guys, 167 miles per hour usually it's limited on every other car in the world but Acura didn't do that that's wonderful but MPG numbers then coming in at 21 in the city 28 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here in the Integra did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there's actually a little toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter those drive modes will include comfort sport sport plus and individual adjusting things like the throttle response the steering sensitivity and actually the exhaust note as well that was one of the first things I noticed when I put it in sport driving mode it definitely uh, gave it a nice deep tone which is pretty darn cool but we'll be doing that exhaust clip a little later in the video so stick around for that but now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a quick little straightaway here nothing too crazy and let's put the integra type s here to the test and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed gotta love that rev matching all right there's someone behind us but here we go three two one go Woohoo! <laughs> all right we're at 60 i ain't going any faster but Dang, that was fun. I love this car. It's something, it, it kind of brings me back. I love the six-speed manual on this thing. I love the rev matching. It, it's one of those cars where not every manual transmission, it, it's, it's fun to drive. This one is, and typically Honda and Acura always crush it with their manual transmissions, and the Integra Type S is certainly no exception. This is actually, it's one of those cars where if you have a daily drive and you want to take it, this is doable. Whereas like maybe a WRX isn't because it's more notchy with the shifting, but with Hondas and Acuras, typically they absolutely crush it. And they definitely did that with the Integra Type S as well. This is actually a fun car to drive, even if you're daily driving it. So well done Acura. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front disc in the back, 12 inch solid rear disc, four piston front calipers, as well as far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that comes in at 107 feet, which is incredible. Typically with sedans, you find that in the 120s, if sometimes even the 130s, but 107, that is sports sedan good, if not race car good. So that is incredible stopping distance right there. Braking is definitely on the firmer side of things which i am a big fan of so absolutely no issues there then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a dual axis strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars and of course acura's adaptive damping suspension as well i'm always a big fan of those essentially what they are is it monitors each shock absorber individually not only adjusting to the road imperfections giving you a smoother ride but it's also going to tighten up that suspension during heavy cornering really giving you the best of both worlds so that is something I always look for, especially in a car like this. Better handling, but you also get the ride quality as well. So big fan of that. Speaking of, as far as ride quality goes, I mean, it's not the smoothest, right? It's not like an S-Class, but it feels good. It feels a lot better than uh, like a base Integra because the base Integra wouldn't have that adaptive damping suspension. So I've had absolutely no issues there, but the steering feel, that's what I'm a really big fan of. It's definitely weighted on the heavier side of things that I believe I said that in my uh, regular Integra review as well. The steering feel on the Integras are absolutely amazing. It's weighted heavy, instantly points you in the direction that you want to go, so definitely a fan of that. As far as cabbing noise goes, uh, really all I'm getting is the sound of this wonderful exhaust. I'm still excited for that exhaust clip later in the video, but, and you do get some pops too when you downshift. Let's see if we can get one. 
Maybe not this time, but they are there. Trust me, they're there. They're touching on visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back. It looks like just a regular Tegra, so no issues there. And there's the pop. Also though, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard. So whenever the Tegra detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So it's just one less thing you gotta worry about there. And you got a head up display that is also standard, which is projecting my speed, speed limit, and safety features up on my windshield. And there's a little compass up there too, which is pretty cool. So it's gonna help with forward visibility, better help keeping your eyes on the road as well. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Acura Integra Type S. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Acura Integra Type S finished in platinum white pearl. In case you were curious of our exterior color name that we had on this one, but as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Integra is actually made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number one, indicating that the Integra Type S is built and assembled here in the US. Transmission though, is built and assembled in Japan. Just saying. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. My favorite part is the Integra embossed into the front bumper. That is a throwback to the DC2 Integra, of course. Absolutely love that. But you also have Acura found in the front headlights as well. And by the way, they are LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. You got the automatic feature, you got automatic high beams as well. Meaning if you have your high beams on at night and since it's a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically dim bounce it back up to high beams. So love that. You also have the Type S badging found in the front grille there. And of course the front grille is specific to the Type S. And I like how everything is finished in a gloss black in terms of the Acura logo up front as well, because traditionally it's gonna be finished in silver. So you also have some massive front air curtains found in the bottom two corners there to help direct air around the wheel and tire combination. I like the front intercooler, the front mount intercooler, since it is a turbocharged engine. I think that looks dang cool as well. And one of the best parts here, you guys see the hood vents here? They aren't just for show. These are actually functional hood vents. You can feel the heat coming out of these hood vents right here because I just got done driving it, of course. So they do work. It serves a purpose to let the engine breathe a little bit. So I am a big fan of that as well. So overall, it's a very distinguished look. And I like looking at it from the front end because you can actually see these uh, the wide body fender flares because the Integra Type S is actually 2.8 inches wider than the standard Integra. Fun fact for you there. So that is pretty cool as well. So I love looking at this car. It takes me back to my white RSX back in the day. But anyways, so now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one here. All right, so first let me start by saying this is a demo Integra Type S for the dealership. So they literally had to put every single option on it. They're required to by Acura. So this has got a lot going on, including these carbon fiber mirror caps. That is one of the options. That goes for $670 in case you were interested. But black window surrounds do come standard. Power adjustable side mirrors do come standard. They are heated. You do get LED integrated turn signals as well. Love the Type S badging in the front fenders there. That definitely looks good. And of course the fender flares, like I said, giving it that more aggressive appearance as well. Regarding the wheels, they do come standard in 19 inch form, but I will say these are 19 inches as well, but the bronze ones, they are optional. It's one of those other options I was telling you guys about. Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires do come standard on all configurations of the Integra Type S, so definitely some added grip there. And there really wasn't any spinning when I was hitting the gas either, which is kind of cool to see considering all that power being sent to the front wheel. So I think the more you learn how to drive the vehicle, the less of that spinning you're actually going to get. So it was a fun drive, even with all that power being sent to the front wheels. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Integra Type S, Body colored shark fin antenna. You have a center high mount stop lamp here as well. This carbon fiber rear spoiler, another added option for approximately $1,100, $1,200 if you wanted that. Once again, you got the Integra etched into the rear bumper. That definitely looks good. LED tail lights do come standard. You got the Type S badging as well. Once again, the gloss black Acura logo. And you have this massive gloss black rear diffuser. It looks absolutely amazing with these massive exhaust tips three of them wrapped in chrome. And by the way, this is an active valve exhaust, meaning those valves are opened up fully in that Sport Plus driving mode. So having said that, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in that Sport Plus driving mode for you guys. And I do believe you guys know what we have to do next is always here is that exhaust clip. Since 
we are still around back to go ahead and open up this rear tailgate there is a button to unlock it on the actual key fob itself or you can just hit the unlock button don't really matter the actual button to open it up is a rubberized button found just below the acura logo just like the rsx that i had back in the day but once opened up though cargo capacity comes in at 24.3 cubic feet you do have some led cargo lighting back here i love that got some crow plated tie down anchors as well the massive subwoofer for that els studio 3d sound system is located back here we'll test out that sound system here in a little bit you got a cargo net on the left side here for some added storage and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you are going to find the fix a flat as opposed to the spare tire i personally would have preferred the spare tire but i'm sure it's a weight savings thing by putting the fix a flat back there so oh well it is what it is by the way there is a 60 40 split so those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it but now let's go ahead and jump into the rear seats and see how much legroom we have there all right so when it comes to rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.4 inches so in terms of legroom i am perfectly fine i will say my head is just barely grazing the top of the roof here so i mean even six feet tall and uh in terms of headroom it's fine i do have to duck down a little bit but if you're a little bit taller than six foot you might not be as comfortable in the back seat but you might as well just be in the front seat driving then if you're going to do that but you do have a couple cup holders found in the center here there's no actual center armrest no big deal there also no rear air vents kind of surprising to see that no charging ports either but always like to mention all of that stuff but did you have the cup holders so that's good all right so before we start it up let me start by showing you guys the key here you do have your acura logo on the one side with the type s logo actually as well on the other side lock unlocking the button to pop the rear tailgate but it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and clutch and press that engine start button located just kind of to the left of the air vents there but so let me start by go ahead and bumping it back to comfort driving mode so it's not as loud but there is a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster front and center i'll show you guys the b-roll there and it is going to adjust in color depending upon the drive mode that you put it in if you put it in sport plus it's going to be a lot bunch of red hues if you put it in sport it's going to be a bunch of gray hues and then comfort is going to give you those blue hues but it is going to give you a digital speedometer it's going to give you trip a trip b outside temperature and pretty much everything you could want on a digital gauge cluster up there but so then in terms of of overall interior quality i do like the led interior lighting that we have here also overhead sunglass holder and that feels like a high quality one too so that's kind of nice dark metal interior trim at least that's what acura is calling it it is not metal though it is plastic but i like the look of it i will say that just in front of the shifter you do have a wireless phone charger that's where i'm setting my phone right now a couple usb charging ports 12 volt power outlet you also have an electromechanical parking brake to the left of the shifter and by the way i do like that the shift boot is actually in the suede material which is is the same as the seats seats by the way are a suede or alcantara slash leather combination and they are extremely comfortable seats without a doubt no issues with the seating whatsoever and that's due in part because the seams are vertical so that doesn't cause any awkward pressure points in your back i like that also heated seats do come standard as well don't want to forget to mention that those are just by the climate control vents there but just behind the shifter you will have dual cup holders and within the center armrest teeny bit of storage there but honestly it should be enough to get the job done but then just to touch on the steering wheel a little bit because i love this steering wheel also finished in suede uh let me see how telescoping it is it's fine it'll get the job done it's pretty much on par for the course so no issues there and again it's finished in suede with red contrast stitching and the type s logo on the very bottom there i like that then touching on the infotainment screen it is a nine inch color touchscreen display let me see everything works actually pretty quick i don't have any issues there bluetooth and audio streaming but you get wireless android auto apple carplay so i am a huge fan of that as well my very favorite part of course is the 16 speaker els studio sound system so i did test this out in the integra and it was my favorite sound system of any of the other vehicles i've ever tested believe it or not so i'm a huge fan i could already tell you right off the bat but having said that let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and as always let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> I think what I said before, and it still feels like it, it feels like you're at a concert. The clarity is insane. Like, I know there's a lot of speakers in SUVs out there. You'll find a 12 speaker, 14 speaker sound system in SUVs, but to put 16 speakers in a vehicle the size of the Integra or a Civic, it's absolutely insane. 100% overkill, and it works perfectly for the Integra ton of bass i was actually rumbling my leg a little bit too so the bass is incredible the clarity is 
phenomenal. This is an incredible sound system for the Integra, without a doubt. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Integra in reverse, and by the way, to put the Type S in reverse, you simply just slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the right. That is going to give you a rear view camera, giving you a few different angles, not the most high quality camera in the world, but it's fine, not a big deal. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. Rear side impact airbags though as well. That's typically a feature you have to pay like $600 for on BMW or Mercedes, so a big fan of that. But also coming standard, a collision mitigation braking system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, road departure mitigation system, traffic sign recognition, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, and front and rear parking sensors as well. And so having said that, when it comes to my final thoughts of the Integra, this thing is a blast to drive. It doesn't have to be the quickest car in the world because it comes with the most butteriest six-speed manual with rev matching in the world. It's one of those transmissions where you can actually take this vehicle and make it a daily driver if you wanted to, but then also have some fun with it as well if you wanted to. It is an incredible six-speed manual for this thing. Having said that, the car is not slow. It's still, it's still plenty quick, but the transmission is one of the elements that makes this car so incredibly fun to drive drive not to mention the braking 60 to 0 and 107 feet and this feels like it it's an incredible stopping distance braking is on the firm side i love that steering feel is another big win for this thing it's weighted on the heavier side of things it instantly puts you in the direction that you want to go there's no dead spots and it's an incredible steering feel so really to sum it up the driving dynamics are perfection the els studio sound system has the very best sound system that i have ever tested in my past 700 plus drives or whatever it is now so I love the sound system in this thing. You definitely can't beat it. Having said that, there is some room for improvement, of course, as well. For example, you don't have any rear air vents. So if you wanted to take this on a daily driver and you maybe have rear passengers or kids in the back and it's a super hot day, kind of like it is today, rear air vents might definitely help out with that. And the really, the only other thing I could think of is the price. So this thing retails for, what did I say, 50,000, maybe after taxes, it might be 52, 53. But with all the options on this one, it goes for 60,000. And then having said that, this thing still gets sold. It's sold. This one is sold. It's a demo right now, but after the demo period is done, it is already spoken for. So I guess people are willing to pay it. And to be fair, if you got the money, this is really an incredible car. But for me, I wish it was less expensive because I love this transmission in this thing. And why don't they put this transmission in the regular Integras? I think that would be phenomenal. That would be great. But then again, I guess that's what the Civic Si is there for. All right, so, but that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews, because that is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.